we're off. Right, okay, so last one of the night. It's still Friday, 30th of December. You're watching this in the future, and this is the second and last Luxembourg whiskey um, of the run. And this particular one isn't a whiskey because it's a new make spirit. Um, this was another very kind donation from the fantastic Tobias von Neubrunner. Thank you, Tobias, for this. And um, I, I think he may have sent this with a view of actually me being able to encourage people to find out about it because this looks to be a, a very, very small distillery, like smaller than micro distillery. Um, that was recently set up. Now, the only information that I've managed to find out about this distillery is from the website, which is small-brook.com. It's a dis distillery called Smallbrook. And um, it's that small. Uh, the guy that runs it um, is a guy called Christian. I don't even know what his surname is. Um, he's, it's, um, the website is in um, German and English. Luxembourg, I think, because of where it is, um, I'm, they, they speak multiple languages you know I live in England we barely speak English um, and yet in Luxembourg it seems they speak French and um, German and English and Dutch and all sorts like everything um, because they're pretty much surrounded by every country on earth um, so my, my Dutch is terrible uh, my Dutch my German is terrible um, Christian's English is far far better than my German um, so half the, half the website is in English and it's broken English but it's perfectly legible you know exactly what's going on um, and he's, he's got pictures of updates and things like that um, so the still is tiny if I can I'll put a picture of the still up but it's whether I can get it off the off the website to be able to put up but it, it's it's like about it looks like it's about that big um, and he said that he set up the distillery, he's got a passion for whiskey, and he's hoping to do um, two or three 30 litre uh, casks every year. This is nothing, this is, this is tiny amounts um, on, on an annual basis. Um, his first distillation, I think, started in October 2014. Um, so we're looking at next year to be sort of his first release because he wants it to be between three and seven year old. Um, he has bought casks um, by the looks of it. There is a, a red wine cask, there is a Pedro Jimenez cask, there is a port cask, but these are small casks as well. These, these are not massive barrels, these are small, um, uh, small barrels that he's using. So this is, this is the smallest of small scale. It, it's just absolutely tiny. Uh, and what Tobias has sent me um, is something that's called White Brook, which is, is basically uh, the new make the new make spirit um, is 50%, so I'm guessing he's diluted it down to 50%. Um, and this is this is basically new make off the still before it's gone into any of the casts, which is why it is crystal clear because it has picked up no coloration from any cask whatsoever. It's just bottled straight away. Um, I have done a new make before, which was from King's Barnes, which was the new distillery um, up near, not too far away from St. Andrews. Um, so it's it's always interesting to try and you make, but it's you have to look at it slightly differently because you have to look at what what new makes got with the view of whatever you put it in cask wise that's going to have quite a large influence. So this is the base spirit that is then going to have a lot of character imposed on it from whatever cask it is. So the you know, knowing that he's got these three casks, the red wine cask is probably going to taste different to the Pedro Jimenez to the port cask that he's got. But ultimately, the base spirit still kind of comes off this, and you can garner some kind of elements from new make spirit to give you an indication as to right. Okay, you know, it could be quite light, it could be quite smooth, it could be quite rich, that sort of thing. Um, but really, that's it, information-wise. Um, but I would encourage people to go and have a look and get in touch. He's got a Facebook page, he's got a Twitter account, um, and. I don't think the scale, you know, I don't think you're going to be able to turn around to him and say, right, I want six cases for my shop in Louisiana. It's not going to be along that scale. But just to give him some support, give him some encouragement. He seems to be really passionate. He's, he's given it a go. And, you know, there aren't that many people out there that are giving it a go um, and, you know, carrying it on. So fair play to the guy. I wish I knew his surname. Um, so I'm hoping Tobias will be able to give me a little bit more information because I'm willing to bet he knows a fair chunk about this particular distillery. Um, 
But Tobias, thank you very, very much for this. It certainly was eye-opening trying to find out about it, and it was certainly a challenge. So colour-wise, I don't think any colouring's been added, that's for certain. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's crystal clear. What would you expect? 50%, um, I do have some water, um, but I'm gonna try it neat and see whether I can garner it. Now, I've not had that much new make in my life. Um, in fact, I've got a feeling King's Barnes might have even been the first new make I've ever had. So, you know, I'm no expert on what I'm looking for in new make, but it is, it's something different, it's something unusual. Interesting. There is a sweetness to it though. There is, there is a clarity to it and you would expect that, but there is, there is quite a sweetness. There is, there is a rawness and again, you would expect a raw character to it, but there is a, there is a, like a jelly sweets sweetness to it as well. It's pretty intense, you know, it, it sort of smells partly like you would expect it to in terms of very spirity, very intense. It doesn't burn your nose. It doesn't strip everything off. It's not like sniffing paint thinner. There is a, there is a definite, and it's, we're talking like jelly sweets, like Haribo's, that sort of thing, where it's a, it's not sickly sweet, but it's, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a kid's sweet sweetness. Interesting. It really doesn't have much of a kick on the back of the throat, which is good. It's not spirity, actually. It's quite smooth. It's quite a rich mouthfeel. It's a really nice nut element to it. Now, I'm not a massive fan of nuts generally, but this is this is very much. A, I tell you what, it reminds me of it's um, it's like hazelnut chocolate. So it's almost it's it's kind of like. Um, like a hazelnut chocolate mousse. There's a rich creaminess to it. On the mouthfeel, it's quite thick, um, which is what's given me that like chocolate mousse element. And it's very much a milk chocolate hazelnut mousse. There, there is a, a, a milk chocolate, not plain chocolate, not white chocolate. It's definite milk chocolate, but quite a, a rich milk chocolate with a, with a hazelnut element thrown in. Um, and it's actually very pleasant indeed. There, a bit more of a kick at the back of the throat. The nuttiness is definitely there. Slight hint of citrus to it. The thing with new make is, because of the rawness of the spirit and the intensity of it, it gets harder to try and pick anything out of it, you know, any individual characters, because it's, it's so raw, you know, it really needs to kind of open out. It's got a little bit of that slight astringent character that I got out of the eye Neckles as well. But it's, it doesn't seem to be quite as good. And I think, I get the feeling that actually, quite a heavy cask. So something like Port or Pedro Jimenez, and he's got a red wine one as well, to really envelop the sweetness, bring that sweetness out, but give it more fruitiness as well, I think could work actually pretty good. If it was something like a, I don't know, like a second fill lighter sherry, or um, you know white wine cask or something like that, I really don't think that would work. This, this spirit's kind of screaming out for some something with richness, something with depth, to kind of work with the thick, thick chocolatiness that you get out of that spirit. And I know that doesn't make any sense looking at that going, how the hell can you say that is chocolatey? But that's the impression that I'm getting, that's the feel, I think that's the mouth feel. To really bring out those sweeter flavors and work and kind of add more fruity intensity to it. Actually bodes really well. I am very, very intrigued. Now, just on this last little bit, I'm gonna add the tiniest drop of water just to see if it does encourage anything else out. There's just the tiniest little bit, so I'm only gonna put a couple of drops in just to see if it, if it does anything, whether it loosens anything out. But there is enough character in there that actually that's quite encouraging. There is a really nice depth to it. Considering this is new make, considering this is crystal clear, there is depth, there is, there's, there's a thick mouthfeel on there. There is enough flavor to 
encourage the thought that other flavor added on top of that is actually going to work really well. I, I get the impression that with, with something like a pork cast, you're going to get quite a rich, depending on the, the, the sort of the state of the pork, isn't it? You know, is it like first fill? Is it going to pick up a lot of character from, from that cast? But there's already quite a rich thickness to it anyway, and there's a sweetness to it that's just going to work and it's just going to bump up those sweet, fruity characters even more. Right. It's got even more nutty adding the water in. Almost a bit too nutty for me. That's gone a bit too much hazelnut. Yeah, didn't actually need the water in it. It's brought out more of the hazelnut flavours and it's become a little bit too nutty. I'm not a great fan of nuts anyway. Um, the, the Borders grain was, was the one that stands out for me where it was just, it was too nuts. And this, that's, just adding that little bit of water has just brought that nutty character out even more. So if you like nuts, you might be onto a winner. Very, very interesting. And I, I would be very keen to see you know, how Small Brook develops because you know White Brook is the new make. So Small Brook's new releases when they come out, and I think we're looking at next year. I think we're looking at 2018 for their first official releases as a whiskey to be coming out. Um, I think it was a red wine cast was the first cast that he got hold of because um, his website kind of diarises uh, you know, what cast he's got and what he's doing with it. And I think it was a red wine cask and then Pedro Jimenez and then he's got, just got hold of a port cask. So I've got a feeling the first release of the whiskey will be a three-year-old red wine cask. Um, I'd be really interested to see what that's like. So Christian, whatever your surname is, I do wish you all the best. Um, I hope 2017 does see your first whiskey launched and I hope it's a success. Um, and if you have 25 mil spare that you want to send my way when it's finally um, up and ready for sale, I'd be very, very interested in trying it. So Tobias, thank you very much for that. That was definitely an education, um, not just in the whiskey, but trying to find out information about it on the internet. So um, yes, there we go, Luxembourg done. Can't remember what I'm gonna do next, but that's for when I finally get into the new year and catch up with you people. So I shall see you in the next one. Cheers.